This is CBN News Watch. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch for Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. I'm George Thomas. Today, more money needed. We explain the message the president is sending to fellow Republicans that puts a massive COVID-19 relief package in jeopardy. Government collapse in Israel. What's next as the country braces for its fourth election in two years? How one Muslim is adapting to COVID restrictions to share the gospel. A Christian album comforting a couple. The music that helped them move past pain. Those stories and much more today on Newswatch. President Trump wants Congress to redo its COVID relief bill, calling it a disgrace that doesn't do enough for Americans. Meanwhile, President-elect Biden is applauding the deal and promising more relief. Heather Sells has the story. Tuesday night, the president unleashed his attack on the bill with a Twitter video, criticizing it for not doing enough to help Americans. Congress found plenty of money for foreign countries, lobbyists, and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the American people who need it. It's called the COVID relief bill, but it has almost nothing to do with COVID. This bill contains $85.5 million for assistance to Cambodia, $134 million to Burma, $1.3 billion for Egypt, the president also went after the bill's political pork at home, including $40 million for the Kennedy Center and $154 million for the National Gallery of Art. And he said the bill's stimulus checks, 600 per individual, are not enough. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi quickly tweeted her support for the 2000 number, as did Senator Bernie Sanders. The president's announcement comes after months of congressional stalemate on COVID relief, followed by the package's quick introduction Monday and overwhelming support in both houses. The American people have waited long enough. But fiscal conservatives like Senator Rand Paul said Americans can't afford to add $2.5 trillion to the nation's $27 trillion debt. If free money were the answer, if money really grew on trees, why not give more free money? Why not give it out all the time? Why stop at $600 a person? Why not $1,000? Why not $2,000? President-elect Biden applauded the bill and promised more stimulus next year. We're going to need to make sure that we're in a position that we can provide for the opportunity for people to begin to go back to work and get new jobs. The president did not specifically vow to veto the bill, but because it's attached to a broader funding measure, the government will shut down on December 29th without it. Heather Sell, CBN News. As Washington braces for major changes at the White House, the rest of the country could see major shifts as well. CBN's Jennifer Wishon shows us why we could see moves to squash religious freedom protections put in place by President Trump. Take a look. Many Americans celebrate President Trump as the most significant champion for religious freedom in a lifetime. His actions made Christians feel secure. And now secularists, humanists, and others feel empowered to unravel Trump-era protections. It all goes back to the May 2017 executive order by President Trump. That day in the Rose Garden, the president used his pen to ensure Christians and other people of faith aren't required to check their beliefs when entering the halls of government and prevented the federal government from going after pastors who speak about political issues from a moral perspective. We will not allow people of faith to be targeted, bullied, or silenced anymore. Now that order tops a long list of Trump administration actions that secular Democrats of America want President-elect Biden to erase. Represented by the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, the group paints Christians as extremists and urges the incoming administration to marginalize people of faith, relegating them to the back pew of the public square. 
Part of their to-do list, ensure humanist and non-theist chaplains serve in each branch of the military, refrain from using the national motto in God We Trust, and reframe patriotism by avoiding phrases like God and country. In order for them to advance this new Democratic Party agenda, which is leftist, which is Marxist at its core, they have to eliminate a vibrant Christian Orthodox faith in America. It stands in their way. Democrats will also push the incoming administration to amend the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, beginning with the Do No Harm Act, introduced by then-Senator Kamala Harris last year. That act would gut the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. It would make it inapplicable to cases that involve sexual orientation and gender identity, as well as abortion. These attempts to marginalize believers come as the media and even elected officials increasingly push the narrative that people of faith are unfit. Unfortunately, we see that senators are increasingly treating religious beliefs with great suspicion and even hostility. Demonstrated, Gao says, in the 2017 appeals court hearings of now Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett, when some senators treated her Catholic faith as a disqualifying characteristic. The dogma lives loudly within you. And that's of concern. In Barrett's Supreme Court hearings this year, Senator Ben Sass pushed back against that statement. Because religious liberty is the fundamental 101 rule in American life, we don't have religious tests. This committee isn't in the business of deciding whether the dogma lives too loudly within someone. Nothing could be more dangerous for the future of America than to separate America from a vibrant, God-fearing faith of its people that will ensure the tranquility and peace and justice that America so desperately needs. And Perkins suggests conservatives take a page from the other side's playbook. That means using every legal option available to make efforts to roll back religious freedoms as slow and painful as possible. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Thank you, Jennifer. We head uh, overseas for a moment. For the fourth time in two years, Israelis are heading to a national election after the government collapsed overnight. The Knesset dissolved automatic automatically at midnight after the deadline expired to pass a 2020 budget or a bill to extend that deadline. During the last seven months, the coalition between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party and alternate Prime Minister Benny Gantz, Gantz's blue and white party was uh, plagued by mistrust and infighting. The upcoming elections are scheduled for March 23rd. Back here at home since it's Christmas season, you might think it makes sense to include a cross as part of your holiday decorations. But one North Carolina Homeowners Association didn't see it that way. Mark Martin has a story of a couple who stood up for their beliefs. James Faison says after Easter earlier this year, his homeowner association said he could put up a six-foot cross during the holidays. But after he and his wife did that for Christmas, they received a letter. We were shocked. We, we really were, we were shocked, especially whenever the email had referenced that the cross was not representative of, of Christmas. And, Faison told and CBN News the North Raleigh couple was even more surprised when the homeowners association told them they had to provide biblical references connecting the cross to Christmas. As if we didn't know why we had the cross up for Christmas time. And I knew they had stepped out of, they stepped out of bounds just asking that, that question. And it, it, it just, it almost, it was an attack on our, our religious freedom. And, and so we, we just decided, hey, we're gonna keep it up. We, we, we wanna fight this. And, and, and so we kept the cross up. The HOA even threatened to find the couple. The letter of the final notice, it, it said that we will be fined $100 per day after the letter if we did not take our cross down or provide biblical references to support it. The couple provided the Bible verses. Also, a local media outlet contacted the homeowner association. CBN News also reached out to the HOA and received this statement. The community's elected board of directors has agreed to allow Mr. Faison to display his cross for the Christmas season. 
The board rescinded their letter and request to remove the cross. Mr. Faison was never fined. Mr. Faison already has a three-foot-tall cross on permanent display at the front of his home, which was never in dispute. Faison says the case has been resolved and is no longer under review, perhaps an example of what can happen when homeowners stand up for their rights. The Community Association president says because James Faison calls the second cross a Christmas decoration, the community's policy states that holiday decorations are to be taken down two weeks after a holiday. Mark Martin, CBN News. Coming up, festivities in our nation's capital at a place Christians call familiar, how the Museum of the Bible is adapting to COVID restrictions to ensure the celebrations go on. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Welcome back to the broadcast in our nation's capital. It's Christmas at the Museum of the Bible. And while things are a little different this year, as you can imagine, because of the pandemic, it's still very festive. CBN's Jenna Browder takes a look and takes us there. It is a warm welcome the moment you walk in with this amazing Follow the Star exhibit in the museum's Grand Hall. Intricate light sculptures, digital displays and music all come together in a beautiful retelling of the Christmas story. At the center, this giant star of David. What I'm doing is creating a new concept with the idea of harmony and peace. And back by popular demand, renowned sculptor Tim Schmalz his sculpture, The Nativity, just unveiled. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus together in a way that, although they're distinct individual figures, they complement and harmonize together. A scene of absolute joy and love. How about a taste of international culture with this Christmas in Malta exhibit? Ten handmade nativity scenes, all crafted in Malta. A centuries-old tradition there, constructing these elaborate landscapes called cribs. Come see us. We would love for the public to come see the Museum of the Bible. Museum CEO Harry Hargrave. We've had over a million seven hundred thousand people come through here over the last three years and of course this year has been truly abbreviated but uh, we are open. We're open seven days a week. We were the first museum to reopen and uh, we're looking forward to seeing a lot of people. He predicts attendance will be about 25 to 30 percent of what it normally would be this year because of the pandemic. And of course, the museum is following the government's COVID commandments. That means no large in-person events. Regular visits, though, no problem. In light of the pandemic, the museum has an exhibit dedicated to healthcare workers. We have an area about early American history where we delve into 
<clears throat> the work of healthcare and of course the, uh, the biblically based organizations that have also uh, provided health care around the world. Whether it's this exhibit or any of the others, Hargrave wants the museum to be an uplifting place for visitors. We hope it to be a place of hope, a place of uh, assurance of what the truth is. We think the Bible is the truth. It's a, it's a book of encouragement. And we could all use an extra dose of that this year. And we should mention the museum also has a Christmas market, family nights, and other activities. There's more information online. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Thank you, Jenna. Still ahead, souvenirs for Christians. How a small token reminds us about the birth of Jesus. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Welcome back to the broadcast. For Christmas, the Israel Museum has revealed the existence of a rare token that was likely a memento of a Christian's trip to Bethlehem, the, place, the birthplace of Jesus, at least 1,400 years ago. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl explains. They're called eulogia tokens, small souvenirs that Christians collected on pilgrimages to the Holy Land. I'm holding a tiny, a miniature a token um, that used to belong to a, a six or seven century a pilgrim that came here and do a journey. We have here the nativity scene, so he probably visited Bethlehem. Here in the archaeology wing of the Israel Museum, they have a reconstruction of an early church from the Holy Land. They also have items that show that pilgrims from way back then wanted to take souvenirs back with them, just like they do today. Assistant curator Morag Wilhelm discovered this rare piece in a large collection that had been donated to the museum. We can see Jesus, the baby Jesus, and also the ox and the ass, but they are inside architectural building. And we think that this building is the church of the nativity. The souvenirs were made of earth taken from holy sites. This one is unique because Mary and Joseph are not in the picture, and it's likely depicting the cave under the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. That makes it a combination of the historical event from the birth of Jesus and a depiction of a place a few centuries later. So this combination is very rare in the case of Bethlehem. We have it here in Jerusalem, but um, from the Holy Sepulchre, but not from Bethlehem. Christians have been making pilgrimages to places mentioned in the Bible for at least 1,700 years. In one historical writing, the church father, St. Jerome, relates the story of a woman from Rome named Paula. 
Then she entered the cave of the Savior and saw the stable where the ox knew his master and the ass his lord's manger. Then she solemnly declared in my own hearing that, with the eyes of faith, she saw a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, weeping in the Lord's manger. So we guess that we are seeing here, it's this special visualization or religious experience that you go to the holy place and you actually see baby Jesus in the cave of Bethlehem. Other tokens depict the baptism of Jesus and the crucifixion and resurrection. There are small vials for oil and crosses, pendants, and rings. And while coronavirus may have closed down international travel for now, when the gates reopen, tourists and pilgrims are sure to return to Israel and the Holy Land. Julie Stahl, CBN News, the Israel Museum, Jerusalem. Very, very cool. Up next, music to put you in the Christmas mood. What these Bethel music singers have to say about their latest selections. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead, just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown, Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? Welcome back to the broadcast. For years, worship leaders Paul and Hannah McClure struggled to find Christmas music that fully celebrated the birth of Jesus. So this year, the Bethel music songwriters decided to write their own. Ephraim Graham samples the worship-filled project and shares the story behind the music in this week's Studio 5. He starts with the story of a baby born in Bethlehem. So the project for folks who may not have heard, it's called Christmas Morning. It begins Christmas Morning. Why that start? One night we just had that lyric concept of Christmas Morning and, and the, the feeling of that you have on Christmas Morning is the feeling that we have and should have as believers that every day is this realization and newness of what Jesus has done. And so it's kind of this this rare moment of inspiration <laughs> one night at 11 p.m. where the whole song just came out. Heaven's silence has been broken. My heart sings hallelujah. We're looking at six tracks, five originals. That's a bold yeah. move when it comes to Christmas music. <laughs> this project has only one familiar. <laughs> Everything changes. We went in we thinking we would do like the opposite, like five covers and then an original. But I think even, you know, even some of the songs like High King of Heaven, you know, we wrote new lyrics to the tune of Be Thou My Vision. So even some of the songs feel like you know them already, even though they're new. Gracious Redeemer, 
This is probably the most intimate worship Christmas project I have uh, ever heard. And I have to ask, was that intentional? Did you guys plan for it to be so worship filled? How, oh, how could it be? Oh, sacred mystery. Yeah, that was the goal, really. Um, because we were worship leaders of a small church um, a few years back, and we we love Christmas. We've always loved doing Christmas songs, but we're always looking for Christmas worship, and it's just really hard to find. There's not a whole lot out there. In my mind, I'm like, Christmas should be the most worshipful thing right. that we do, you know? <laughs> What um, made you guys decide in terms of the familiar Christmas tune, O Holy Night? What made you embrace that as part of this project? That is my personal favorite uh -huh. Christmas song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The goal was for it to be worshipful. We felt like that was probably the most worshipful Christmas carol. I mean, the words are so powerful. Just. I mean, I feel like you don't have to do much. You just sing it, and it's yeah. just so powerful and filled with the presence. I think it's a crime to do a Christmas album without a holy night. So <laughs> we don't want to go against <laughs> it's that law. Even in the weird COVID where there's 10 people in the room, <laughs> we still really felt the Holy Spirit show up yeah. in these songs. So it's been a lot of fun. What's your prayer uh, and Christmas wish this season? On more of a broad sense, um, Christmas time can already be lonely for people and sad and, and all the things. And I think. I think especially in a COVID year where it's even heightened, our prayer is that for this album that people would meet Jesus and that they would mm -hmm. feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit even amidst the weirdest year I've ever experienced being alive. It's beautiful. The McClure's Christmas Morning is available right now. They're also part of tonight's Christmas edition on Studio 5 alongside actor and youth pastor Kel Mitchin. You can catch Studio 5 right here on the CBN News channel, channel tonight at 8.30 Eastern. Folks, that is it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can find more of our exciting news programs on the CBN News channel anytime or online with CBNNews.com. Also, tell us what you think about the stories you've seen by emailing us at newswatch at CBN.com or you can reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We wish you guys a fantastic rest of the day. From all of us here at the Christian Broadcasting Network, Merry Christmas.